and we are recording. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for taking time. And for those who couldn't make this time fit in your schedule, that's great. We have it recorded. I really am uh, have been just waiting for for this meeting. There's so many things that I'm ready to share with you and and excited about. So I'm just going to dive right in and get started. The very first thing we wanted to do today was have Chris give you another legislative update. But uh, yesterday, Chris got called out to the legislature, so he will not be with us this morning. And uh, the update basically is that everything with the extension budget is still very much on hold. Uh, most of you may have heard that the legislators were waiting until the March 18th outlook. And once that financial outlook came out, uh, they were going to be able to proceed with better information. The unfortunate thing is that the outlook was less favorable, so there would be less um, dollars available, which means now that they are back at work and um, definitely not spending a lot of money. And uh, it doesn't look very promising for many new things. But Chris is out there today, and we hope that um, our priorities will be met to some degree. and. We'll see what happens, but that's about the best update I can give you right now. Everything has um, been very interesting and very different from the previous session. Uh, it seems like they always are, but yet at the same time, um, I would say that it's been quite challenging to uh, try to move forward with our priorities. And Chris is out there doing his dangdest, and um, I appreciate all he's doing, and I'm sure you do too. So. Just a very brief little set of comments, and he regrets that he couldn't be with you today, but that's that's how that process works. Okay, so since we last met, just a couple of comments. First of all, people turned in plans of work, QPRs, and impact reports. And especially for people who are newer with us, I like to remind everybody of why we do them and how they are used. And um, plans of work. There, there was some um, question as we went through the process about some of the timing and could we see them and so forth. We take the plans of work and um, at, that you do, we ask that you look at the menus that are online for each of the subject matter areas, the program menus, signature programs, core programs, etc. Look at those and prioritize and develop your plan of work. And so since you have helped to develop that menu, our program teams have helped to develop that menu, the specialists are quite aware of your input and are able to visit with you more intently and see what are the priorities. That's what goes on that menu. And then they will develop what needs to be developed based on your input. So we used to have, years ago, we used to have a process where all of those were then sent to the specialists, they reviewed them, and then they produced some things. We've kind of changed that process up, and I think some of the people who have been with us a little bit longer um, um, need to just be reminded that we've changed that process for how we do the planning. We've tried to have much more team involvement. Uh, we meet, especially at fall conference, where we try to wrap it up and pull together your best ideas. So plans of work were put in. Um, the process, I guess, we had very few hitches this year, so glitches or hitches, so that was good. Um, QPRs. We just realized yesterday, Chris and I were talking, that uh, the first quarter of this year has now passed, March 31st. So um, you can put your QPR numbers in again. QPRs, how are they used? Well, all of those numbers are used, and this, what we did is we um, created a chart that you may have seen in Chris's um, recent blog post. He takes those numbers and he uses them in, during the legislative session to show the quantity of face-to-face -face contacts. And of course, they're used in our federal report too. It's required for us to report that, um, and so that is a very important uh, set of numbers and data that we use. And then finally, impact reports. Um, I've appreciated very much everyone's effort to continue to work on those impact reports and update them. I just counted this past week for myself, and I think I had something like 12 or 13 individuals who called for some specific help with beefing up their evaluation tools, and that's across um, AG and FCS. And <clears throat> it was really encouraging to me to see all, whether it was field staff or whether it was specialists, more and more people 
who are calling to say, okay, how do I beef up this evaluation? How do I get this to be stronger? And we're going to constantly be focusing on that. That's not going to go away. Uh, in fact, we've made some revisions to our four levels card that we use and our next training at orientation. We're going to add a little bit to the training and see if we can't find a way to um, do some training updates for all of you. The reason this is so important, if I didn't think it was before, I really know it is now. Some of you have heard me talk about the Battelle study, a study that's being done about the value of FCS extension across the 12 North Central states. It's been a year-long process, and in fact, the final product was just delivered yesterday. And during that process, if you're going to talk, talk about the value of our programming, people ask, as did Battelle, well, show us the proof. Where's your proof? How can you show? How can you prove to us that there's value to this? And if I simply say, well, I know it's good, everybody liked it, I have nothing to show. And what I can tell you, out of the 12 states, there are some states that still have nothing, and it's really unfortunate. But North Dakota had some wonderful impact reports, and I thank you for the work that you've been doing and we took our quality impact reports and those got used in that national study. And that's what's going to help us to go to the federal um, uh, government committee, on ECOP committee, who's tried to lobby to get the money for health extension efforts. So they're very important. And if you are feeling as you, though you've heard this a million times, um, I hope that pretty soon you'll just say, okay, I've heard it a million times, but I'm going to keep listening and I'm going to keep trying to do what I can do to beef those up. It's that important. So why do we do them and how are they all used? That's just a little bit of a review for you. Also, the quality review. Um, two program leaders have started with all of the impact reports done by specialists, and we have rated them as to, did you turn in an impact report that's a level one, two, three, four? And we want to start to follow to see, are we getting more level? Well, they should all be at least a level two. But are we getting more to level three and four? And where do we need the most help? And how, what kind of additional education can we provide to our specialists? So that's where we're going right now. And once we have that accomplished, we're going to do the same thing with the county staff. So just know that it's that important. And we really value your willingness to keep working on this with us. All right. Item number two, job search for Abby Gold. Uh, Abby Gold's position officially ends June 30th. She has already moved into the uh, new role that she has. However, she is on our books until June 30th, let's say, and the position is, is still filled until June 30th. Um, and we do have a special arrangement that she is still providing minimal support to finishing up a couple of projects. In the meantime, we were ready a while ago to start the search and thought that we were going to search for a full-time North Dakota person, but Minnesota came with another um, proposal for us to consider. And after much deliberation and, and discussion, we've decided to try this. And what it is is that we will have another specialist to fill Abby's position that will be joint, Minnesota and North Dakota, shared specialist again. However, a much narrower focus so that they are doing the same work in both states. For example, health extension. Um, it's going to be taking place in both states, and so this will be an opportunity for one person to focus in an area and still serve both states. For, and what we will get in addition to that is another area food and nutrition specialist that will serve both states. So it's going to be interesting, and that person will serve this end of the state. However, remember in the legislature, we have asked for an area specialist. We're hoping to get the one area specialist. And if we do, that person would be in the western end of the state. So this is still um, an ongoing process. We're waiting to see now what the legislature does before we completely move in that direction. However, we are ready to refill Abby's position. And that committee has been formed. And they meet next week for the first time to make sure that our job description is what it needs to be, and then we will open it up. So if any of you are familiar with people who are um, uh, nutrition specialists that would like to, uh, to pursue a job here at NDSU Extension, 
then you could start to get the word out. The, the job description should go up within the next couple of weeks. All right, so that's the update on that position. I'm just going to pause one minute in case anybody has any questions on those first two things. Um, you can either unmute and ask or type it in. Okay, I don't see anyone typing, so I think then we're ready to move on. The next um, thing is your spring training, which is coming up here shortly. I regret that I won't be there, and I wanted to um, make sure that you knew why. I had agreed a long time ago to serve as chaperone for the 4-H kids going to Washington, D.C. for their um, 4-H um, conference meeting. And naturally, it's happening right at the same time as your spring training. So I won't be able to attend this year, and I, uh, like I said, I regret that. I always enjoy having an opportunity to get together. But that's where I'll be. I had volunteered to do that before this date was set. So um, if you do have... I, I know you're in good hands, seen what they're up to, seen the agenda, agenda, and I know that you're going to have a really good meeting and um, uh, very uh, excited for you for some of the things you're going to get to see, too. Um, if you have any questions or anything after the training takes place that you'd like to share with me, you know I'm always open to a call or an email, so please be sure and do that. Okay. Um, Molly. Molly has typed in a question. Can you describe the dual role for Abby's position again? Okay, Abby's position has always been joint position between Minnesota and North Dakota, which means that she was only half time serving our state. And we had another half position, right? Because that was a full time, a one full FTE. And we were unable to find another half time person because I can't pay out benefits for a half time position to fill that. And so therefore, we thought, okay, we're going to go with a full position, and we won't have that problem. But instead, Minnesota came along and said, we'll give you that other half, so you can have a half-time area person, as long as we could have the half-time um, specialist person. Hoping this is making sense, Molly. So therefore, we decided to stick with that. And in the past, Abby had um, some work that she was doing for Minnesota on a couple of grants that were different from the work she was doing in North Dakota. And so it was more difficult, I think, for her as a specialist since she had different position descriptions almost in the two states. And then, of course, just like trying to travel to our area and cover things in Minnesota, it was, it was pretty demanding. What we have changed is we are going to try and make that as similar as possible in both states. So, for example, as health extension rolls out and we have some needs for health extension that will be expected of um, uh, a staff person, it could be assigned to this new person who does that for both North Dakota and Minnesota. So that's what we mean by dual role. Um, she, she will be in two states but have hopefully one role. Does that help? Okay. And if anyone has more questions about that, please give me a call. Um, you are being represented on the search committee by Sue Mylander, and so we thank her for doing that. If you have questions or comments as this gets rolling and um, we start interviewing and all that good stuff, you know, you can always share with her as well. We have not set up the, the, the committee to go forward with the area position. We're waiting till the legislature decides here so we have a little better idea of what's going on. Okay, let's move down to the next thing, which is the summer FCS in-service. Now, I'm hoping all of you are able to access your attachments. Um, so let's just pause a minute and let's see if you can. If you can all find your attachments, one of them is called Summer FCS Teacher In-Service. And so let's see how that's going for you. Um, when you are able to open your attachment, would you just um, type yes into the 
box that you have the attachment in front of you? Okay. Oh, good. <laughs> Chris is smiling right now, too. We had a little difficulty with the attachments this morning. So it looks like most of you, okay, Maxine says no. All right. Where are they? Okay. Okay. Chris, do you want to type into the box for those people who are not able to see the attachment, how they can get it? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my, try to share my screen and try to show it to you. All right. And would someone let me know if you are now able to see the attachment? I believe you are. It tells me you can see it. Okay, very good. Well, what you're looking at is the agenda for the summer FCS teachers, the FACS teachers that um, come for an update. Uh, some of you who were with us last year at this time know that we experimented last year and for the first time we offered an in-service where FCS teachers could come to Fargo and basically they were getting information that was on your previous year's program list. So we were not sharing the new information but we were going back one year. and. Um, it went very well. They were extremely pleased and, and happy to uh, have participated. So at that point, they um, uh, asked us to do it again. And this year, the emphasis will be the HDFS subject matter, as you can see. And a couple of the things on here uh, uh, will be at your spring in-service training, too, as far as the, the tour of the um, NDI pad the interagency program for assistive technology that we will be doing with um, your group as well and Jane has led that effort so we wanted you to see what was happening you'll notice that um, they'll get a tour of the lab which you had this past year we wanted you to see what was happening on that agenda um, it's not until June 24th 25th but at least now this time, since we have it a little bit more together, this time you're able to um, um, see what's happening before it happens instead of getting it after it happened. But um, we're our second time around, we're just a little bit more organized and, and we have a system in place now, so it's, it's a little bit better. So that's the FCS um, training that will be taking place for teachers in North Dakota this year. And you'll have an idea of what's going on. So I'm going to flip back over to my other screen now. It's loading, so hang in there, everyone. All right. We're back. That's our summer in-service. And the next thing on the screen is the team program list for 2015. So let me pull that up. And it is an attachment, so if you all can go back to your attachments again, um, you will see the what we have always called package programs. We're trying to get into the terminology of calling them team programs. And you'll see that list. Hopefully you can all access that attachment. Again, I will share my screen and hope that if you haven't been able to access it, you'll be able to at least see it right now and 